It must be incredibly reassuring for WWE stars to know that, should they leave the company for whatever reason, an alternative now exists in the form of AEW. It's good for everyone that there's a landing spot, but is the grass any greener on the other side? For some it is, but for other ex-WWE stars, the All Elite Wrestling experience has turned out to be far from a positive one due to the way that they have been used by Tony Khan's organization. A bulging roster coupled with comparatively scant television time has led to accusations that AEW have repeatedly dropped the ball with former WWE guys and gals. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 WWE stars wasted by AEW. Join us. But before we start, today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. We at Cultaholic truly believe that Nord is the best service of its kind. Firstly, it's super easy to use. Connect with one click or enable auto connect for zero click protection. There are over 5,300 servers in 60 different countries, which is a hell of a lot. It has amazing speed, confirmed by the speed tests. NordVPN is the fastest service out there, and it's on every major platform. So here Here's how I use Nord. Obviously, I live in the United Kingdom, but with NordVPN, I can set myself to be anywhere in the world virtually and access content from those regions. So this means, if I fancied it, I could set myself to be somewhere in the world virtually and sign up for a certain sports entertainment network for a fraction of the price. Or if I happen to live in the United States, I could sign up for that sports entertainment network, even though it doesn't properly exist as it did in the United States before. Oh, and it works on lots of other on-demand services too. Nord costs the equivalent of a cup of fancy coffee every month, a small price to pay for complete peace of mind when it comes to cybersecurity and access to a whole range of entertaining content. Also, there's even a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if Nord isn't for you, you can get your money back, no bother at all. Grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com forward slash cultaholic, a link's in the description below, to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan, plus an additional four months for free. And remember, it's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks for watching, enjoy the video. Number 10, Ruby Soho. It all started so well for Ruby Soho, the plucky punkster who had wrestled for WWE as Ruby Riot. Soho enjoyed a hero's debut as the surprise Joker entrant in the Women's Casino Battle Royal at All Out 2021. Even better, Ruby won the match, last eliminating Thunder Rosa and bagged herself a future AEW women's title shot. Given her momentum and the feeling of freshness around her arrival, it wouldn't have been the worst call to have her be the one to end Britt Baker's reign, but AEW decided against it and had her lose in their showdown on the Grand Slam edition of Dynamite. Oh well, surely she would bounce back and win the big one soon, right? No. Soho has subsequently lost two tournament finals, stumbling to Jade Cargill in her bid for the TBS title, and then getting bested by Baker again in the Owen Hart Cup. After that, Ruby found herself sliding down the pecking order and did most of her work on Dark and Dark Elevation. She was in the process of establishing a team with Ortiz when she suffered a broken nose, putting her on the shelf for an indeterminate amount of time. Truth is, though, she was simply treading water before the unfortunate injury. Number 9. Paul White AEW's signing of Paul White, aka The Big Show, is in many ways one of their most shocking acquisitions thus far. Assumed to be a WWE lifer, White was announced as being All Elite out of the blue via social media less than two months after he had appeared in a backstage segment on WWE Raw. He left Vince McMahon's employ as he didn't feel like he was being used in the right way and had limited opportunities going forward. Well, I wonder how he's enjoying life in AEW, because so far, it's all been a bit there. Nobody was expecting the 50-year-old White to light the world on fire or anything, but so far he's primarily been used as a commentator for AEW's YouTube show Dark Elevation, which is where he's had three of his four AEW matches to date. The thing about White is that he's a huge asset to have away from the camera because he's such a good PR man and has a wealth of knowledge to pass on to a relatively young roster. But as far as how he's been utilized on television, it's hard not to feel that AEW's handling of White 
fight hasn't been the best. Perhaps that will change when he's had more time to heal up, though. And at least he hasn't been made to dress up as a giant baby, I suppose. Number 8. Malachi Black this one obviously comes with a caveat, since there's no telling what Malachi Black could have been in store for had he not taken the decision to step away from pro wrestling for the time being. Black had some bright spots in WWE, particularly as a member of the NXT roster, and the initial signs for him on the main roster were hopeful when he went on a winning streak. By the end of his WWE tenure, however, he had been sitting on the sidelines for months and had a potential feud with Big E taken away from him when he was abruptly released. A month later, he surfaced in AEW and once again got off to a flyer, beating Cody Rhodes in a pair of high-profile matches. The beginning of a monster push for a future single star, it was not, as Black quickly became a trio's division mainstay, even if he was the leader of the House of Black. It would be a crying shame for him to become just another face in the crowd should he return to the AEW ring, though right now the important thing is that Black focuses on himself. Number 7. Athena the tale of Ember Moon in WWE was a sadly familiar one. She arrived amid much fanfare, did some excellent work in NXT, and then was called up to the main roster where things went a bit wobbly. Brand switches, losing streaks, injuries, the former NXT Women's Champion suffered the lot before going back to NXT for a decent, if not slightly underwhelming, second spell. Her name was instantly flagged up as someone AEW should sign after she was released, and though it took about six months for it to happen, she eventually showed up under her old independent ring name, Athena. She's won a lot more matches than she's lost, and has shined intermittently in bouts for the AEW women's and TBS titles, but it feels like Athena is already starting to get lost in the shuffle. And that's something she herself is conscious of, as she told Busted Open Radio, since she's still getting used to her new environment. Hopefully there are bigger and brighter things in Athena's future, because she's proven that she has the talent to do so much more. Number 6. Buddy Matthews Like Athena, Buddy Matthews is an athletic marvel who perhaps didn't get the opportunity to show all that he was capable of in WWE. The former Cruiserweight and Raw Tag Team Champion had some highlights, sure, but overall there was a sense that his run was one of unfulfilled promise, not helped by the underwhelming note it ended on. Presented with a fresh start by Tony Khan's promotion, Buddy has… well, he hasn't done a whole lot really, though that's not exactly his fault. He's impressed when given the chance to showcase his abilities, such as when he squared off with Pac in an All-Atlantic title qualifying match, but otherwise he simply made up the numbers alongside fellow House of Black members Malachi Black and Brody King. There's nothing tremendously wrong with that mind, and it's a decent spot, but Buddy has been All Elite for the best part of a year now and has mainly blended into the background. He's in great shape, can go in the ring, and should be nearing his prime years, let's just hope AEW doesn't waste them. Number 5. Andrade El Idolo Unlike many who were released by WWE during the pandemic era, Andrade Cien Almas found himself lobbying the company to let him go. They resisted for a while, though ultimately relented. His WWE career had started brightly and had runs with the NXT and the United States titles. Somewhere along the way, though, he fell out of favor with the creative staff and found himself turning up to TV tapings just to hang out and eat catering before going home. Betting on himself to succeed elsewhere, Andrade felt that he could be a major star if given the right opportunities. It was no surprise to see AEW snap him up, but it has been a surprise to see them barely utilize the ultra-talented Lucha veteran. Since making his in-ring debut in July of 2021, Andrade has wrestled less than 30 minutes, and a chunk of those were on the low-priority YouTube shows. The thing about Andrade is that he knows his own worth and, at the time of recording this video, was in the process of trying to manufacture either a stronger push or his release. Having a backstage scrap with Sammy Guevara seems like a good way to go about the latter, I guess. Yes. Number 4. Big Damo Alright, this one might be a little bit more personal for me, since I got to witness firsthand how hard Damo worked and just how good he is before he made it to WWE, where he wrestled as Killian Dane. Like the rest of the Sanity group, Dane maybe didn't get to show his full range of talents, but the Beast of Belfast did end up having a five-year run in McMahonland before getting the sack. Almost a full year after being let go by WWE, Big Damo popped up on Rampage as the surprise opponent of Sean Spears. He looked good in the match too, 
too, even if it only lasted 1 minute and 40 seconds and ended with the chairman of AEW picking up the clean win. Spears really had to go over in order to build him up for his match with Wardlow, and that's fine, but didn't his opponent do enough to, at the very least, earn more opportunities? Evidently not, since he hasn't been back and hasn't seemed to fancy his chances when asked about it during interviews. Number 3. Johnny Elite At this stage in his career, John Morrison falls firmly into the hell of a hand category. He's capable of occasional flashes of brilliance, yes, but the thing you get with the old shaman of sexy is consistency and a knack for having decent matches with just about everyone. The Tough Enough winner has been around for a while now and is nearing his mid-40s, but toward the end of his latest WWE run proved that he can be relied upon. His team with The Miz was great value. The pair working wonders with Bad Bunny on and in the run-up to WrestleMania. It was all for now, though, as Morrison was given his pink slip during yet another round of COVID cuts not too long after. Many months later, Johnny Elite emerged in AEW as the Joker entrant in the Owen Hart Cup, putting in a decent shift before being dispatched by Samoa Joe. It was said after that the door was open for him to return, but that door has so far only opened twice, once for a victory over Mark Quinn on Dark and once for a quick loss to a returning Miro on Dynamite. Number 2. Speak of the Devil, Miro Perhaps no other WWE star in recent times has been cited as a missed opportunity as much as Rusev. The Bulgarian brute seemingly had it all going for him and appeared to be on the cusp of greatness on several occasions, only for the rug to be yanked out from underneath him. Bad creative and stop-start pushes really did a number on Rusev, and there was perhaps some slight relief when his name came up during the first round of layoffs at the start of the pandemic. His AEW introduction as Miro was far from red hot though and didn't exactly signify him as a future world champion or anything. The best man stuttered right out of the blocks, and though things got better when he rebranded as the Redeemer, the former TNT champion hasn't really done anything to suggest that he'll be in the main event mix anytime soon. Injuries and time off for outside the ring projects are part of the reason, but Tony Khan and company can also be accused of failing to strike while the iron was hot. Number 1. Samoa Joe Fans will sit and wonder for years to come about just how Samoa Joe didn't manage to have a main roster WWE world title run. The former Ring of Honor, TNA, and NXT champion was in the picture and had some cracking matches with the likes of Brock Lesnar and AJ Styles, but the highest he rose was US title level. His WWE career fizzled out after some well-documented injury woes following spells as a color commentator and backstage trainer. Fans who had watched his WWE career knew that Joe still had plenty left in the tank, with Tony Khan apparently being one of them. Regrettably, the Samoan submission machine has so far only wrestled a handful of matches, and though he won the Ring of Honor TV title, hasn't had anything to really sink his teeth into, save for a run to the finals of the Owen Hart Cup. There are so many hosses on the AEW roster he could be duking it out with, and so many molten promos he could be cutting, but he's just not. Now teaming with Wardlow, for some reason, Samoa Joe just feels like another toy in Tony Khan's sandbox, his luster fading the longer he spins his wheels. For Joe, like so many ex-WWE stars in AEW, it feels like the clock is loudly ticking.